Mm -hmm. Oh my god, someone's behind it. Of course. Compared to part one, I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. I only have season three left to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and go through it, but not the same way. As much as I like how I constructed part one, I just don't have the time. So to go over season three, it starts out with Tim and Jay working together to investigate things that have been going on. One of the things that we end up finding out is Tim's medical history, which consists of a lot of mental problems that were caused by Noodle Man. However, it is also revealed that the medication that Tim frequently takes blocks the effects of Noodle Man. Jay, on the other hand, does not feel very well this season at all, and as it goes on, he progressively gets more crazy. There's also the constant appearance of the hooded figure, which is later revealed to be Brian. More on that later. However, Jay later finds out that Tim was actually involved in Jessica's disappearance. Upon finding out about this, Jay attacks Tim and doesn't really know what he was planning on doing. I just want to talk. <laughs> oh! Drop it! What else do you have? Zip ties! No. Just wanna talk? What were you gonna do? Sit down. Tim sets off to find Alex, and then the hooded figure shows up and frees Jay. Only for Jay to also set off to find Alex. It doesn't end very well for Jay though, he ends up dying because he forgot that Alex has a fucking gun. Alex? Alex? In the final confrontation between Tim and Alex, Tim realizes what Alex is really doing. He's killing all the members of the Marble Hornets crew back in the day to end the influence of Noodle Man, and ultimately ending in Alex also killing himself. Implying if that actually works. Oh yeah, and uh, fucking Brian died. Tim ends up killing Alex in their final struggle, and Alex, before he dies, tells Tim to finish the job that he started. Shortly after, Tim is shown throwing away his mask, and he also engages in a conversation with Jessica who still happens to be around. However, the conversation gets cut short after Tim suffers a coughing fit, and then it cuts off to the final shot, and we get this. Everything is fine. What happened after the footage cut off is left to the audience's interpretation. And that is Marble Hornets. Definitely an interesting ride in what a few people back in the day on YouTube used to do, considering they started off with $500. I'm going to go ahead and talk about my thoughts on the series and what I think about the elements in it. First off, yeah, I definitely have to say that the acting is bad. Compared to when I watched the series years ago, I was definitely distracted now with some of the parts where the acting was definitely noticeable. Alex, just tell us what it I is. I stole that tape from me. The one with Brian on it? And I know you've been following me too. What? I've had plenty of chances to do this. So you're going to kill I didn't want to get Jessica involved. That's why just, I told her that's about Amy. That's your fault! Alex, please! Well, I Don't gave you do this, Alex. I told you never to mention him again. I thought that implied not sharing him with the world. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't never showed him his face in the first place. I should have burned him with him! Go, go! However, I am willing to give a pass to the extent of, yeah, I know, these are just a bunch of random guys on YouTube that decided to make a series. As for its characters, it can definitely hit and miss. I know I've been calling him Noodle Man for a while now, but let's actually discuss the character of the Operator. The character of the Operator is a mystery in its entirety. There is no clear goals or intent for any of the actions committed by it. We don't even know where it came from besides that it first started interacting with Tim. While I would usually criticize a series for not explaining something that is so crucial to the story, I think it's better that way where we just don't know that much about it. It's one of those things where if you had it explained to you, it would kind of ruin the experience. The same thing cannot be said about Brian, or Hoodie if you will. A lot of Brian, or I guess Hoodie's actions don't really make sense to me at all, even on a level if Brian was working for an anonymous figure like To The Ark. I just find it to be really confusing at face value. I'm sure that some fan will be able to give me a good explanation, but I don't have any idea what the fuck is going on concerning the Hoodie character. It's also kind of a shame, really, because when Brian dies as Hoodie, and we find out it was Brian who died, I didn't really care too much because I didn't know that much about the character. As for characters like Jay and Alex and Tim, I think that they're okay for the most part, but there's a number of interactions where I don't think the way they act is reasonable whatsoever, even when you consider the fact that a number of them are on edge all the time because of the operator's influence. 
I guess other complaints can be Alex's complete incompetence when it comes to him using his guns. Seriously, like, he fucking sucks at using his gun. Other than that, I think the plot was okay, again, for the most part, and overall, I believe that the series still holds up to the extent of, yeah, a, a bunch of guys got together and they just decided to make something with what they had, so I think it works. Do I think it's amazing? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's fine for what it is and what it does. While I still hold this sentiment for the series and still think it holds up because of what it is, I'm also not surprised to see opposing opinions as well. And speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and hand off the floor to Jace, who will now discuss his opinion of why he does not think that Marble Hornets holds up. I don't believe Marble Hornets holds up all that well today. Sure, you can argue it was the first of the Slender vlogs and is the one that really kicked off the Slenderman craze, Coming back to it, after having witnessed far better attempts at Slender Vlogs since, I can surely say that it just doesn't hold up. Keep in mind, this is me speaking only after seeing just a few entries. No fucking way am I watching the whole series. And forming my opinion of the rest off of my memory, if you get butthurt by my opinion, well, then you're a faggot. There's a plethora of things that is wrong with Marvel Hornets. The biggest issue being the fact that the series doesn't seem to have a direction in terms of story. Oh sure, it did in the beginning, when Jay was just stumbling onto the mystery and not really investigating it. A spooky there, a jump scare here, all good fun. However, once it got into the investigation portion of the series, that's where the writing took a significant nosedive. And there's two major reasons to blame here. Lack of direction and poor acting. Lack of direction was something that was very obvious what with the pointless twists and turns, like the unmasking of Hoodie. Did anybody really give a shit? Hell, why was Hoodie even introduced? Sometimes pointless entries where nothing happens and actions the characters would take that made no sense. Why did Tim run back to the abandoned hospital from which he ran away because he was knocked out there by Alex? Matter of fact, if Alex was trying to kill him in that entry, why the fuck didn't he kill Tim after he knocked him out with the lead pipe? Poor acting is pretty self-explanatory. I'm sorry, but I just can't take Alex as a significant threat. His awkward as fuck acting just makes me laugh. You like it, Jessica involved! That's why just, I told her I found Amy. That's your fault! Especially when he's waving his gun around. Jay's acting, or writing, or both, makes him come off borderline autistic, where he sometimes ends up being his own worst enemy in the series, because he doesn't seem to know on how to interact with regular people within the series. Which is just frustrating since we're stuck with him for the majority of the series as the main protagonist. Tim, honestly, is the only likable person from the group. His story naturally makes you want to root for him, and he also reacts accurately to the shit that is happening to him throughout the series. I'm sure if I were to actually sit down and watch the whole thing and actually analyze it, I'd find a significant amount of plot holes. However, the key reason as to why Marble Hornets doesn't hold up is because it is a fucking chore to sit through, mainly due to the reasons prior. And I don't care what Ebert had to say about the web series. Ebert always had takes that I strongly disagreed with. Like saying that Friday the 13th Part 4 is a bad, terrible movie, mainly because according to him, it was immoral, vile, and disgusting, because there wasn't a lot of story and instead a lot of murder scenes, or whatever. Never mind the fact that that's always been the thing that made the movies fun to watch. He completely ignored things like cinematography, special effects, and etc. Meanwhile, he rates The Blair Witch as some sort of modern horror classic, when in reality the production of the film was lazy as shit blowing most of their funding on beers and etc. Acting was horrid, and the story was such a snoozeville that I never finished watching it. So it's no surprise that Ebert would compliment Marble Hornets, since it suffers from similar issues the Blair Witch did. And that's not me saying that Marble Hornets is as bad as Blair Witch. On the contrary, Marble Hornets is way above Blair Witch, mainly because they had a low budget, and they still were able to create a more interesting product than the director of Blair Witch. And before I am labeled as a hater, let me tell you this. I used to watch the shit out of Marble Hornets when I was younger. Same goes for Everyman Hybrid, Tribe 12, Caught Not Sleeping, ML Zero Anderson, and etc. And yet, for some reason, I can still rewatch Tribe 12 today, despite some really hefty allegations that the creator is currently facing, mainly because the main character reacts appropriately to the situation. The acting is really good, except for Milo. Oh, buddy. Every entry connects to the grander story, and something always happens in every entry. All because Tribe 12 doesn't try to explain what Slenderman is. It simply uses it as a story device to throw its own characters into this spiral of insanity that we can witness, and because the characters are written and acted so well, we as the audience care about what happens to them, regardless of whether we're actually solving the mystery here or not. But to be honest, all those creations had something to work off of, which was Marble Hornets. Marble Hornets, no matter how much I say it doesn't hold up, it's still a stepping stone in this little uh, internet phenomena that we had for a while. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. I really wanted to put in a lot of effort towards this two-parter because I wanted to try something just a little bit bigger than what I've usually been doing. So I hope you enjoyed it. However, I will be taking a bit of a break from doing longer videos such as these because, dear God, part one nearly killed me. To end it off, I'll go ahead and thank Weavis for the background music and B and Ollie for all of the art. Thank you guys so much. Bye.